Um, the other important surface is the transgressive surface, which represents the, the first uh, m movement of sediment up over the shelf margin here, when sea level rises above the edge here. So when, when it rose above the, the edge here, we see the sediment deposited on the edge here. That's the transgressive surface, and that's easy enough to identify. The, another important um, uh, sequence is the condensed sequence here, which can be traced uh, and as often contains fauna, which allows uh, the paleontologist or the micropaleontologist to age date these uh, sequences. And then another important surface is the ravinement surface, which can, in some cases, be mistaken for the <coughs> underlying uh, sequence boundary. So we've got um, the sequence boundary, the maximum flooding surface, and uh, the transgressive surface, the condensed sequences, and the ravinement. So this is a sequence boundary here, which is the, an underlying surface, okay, an SB. And there's an SB up here, okay, which is related to the fall of sea level here. So that's an SB here. So those are the bounding uh, surfaces to a sequence. And then within the sequence, we have the maximum flooding surface, which represents uh, the surface on which the high stand system track builds out, and the transgressive surface, which represents the first transgression over the shelf margin, the condensed sequence, which may contain fauna, which are very useful to identifying the ages of these uh, sequences, and the ravinement surface, which represents an eroded uh, surface, which sometimes is associated with transient uh, barrier islands. Um, so, this then is a response then, a, a, a response to a change in base level, the development of, and loss of accommodation, and the, the, set, the different sedimentary geometries responding to this uh, loss and gaining of accommodation. Thank you.